Well, hey, uh, it's this week's comics with Hartley Holmberg. And uh, look what we got right out the gates here. We got Supergirl, World of Tomorrow, Woman of Tomorrow. <laughs> um, you know, man, uh, I wasn't sure how I felt about this initially. I love Supergirl and I really enjoy Tom King. Uh, the first issue knocked my socks off. It's it's actually really a unique approach for Tom King. He usually starts off with some sort of um, mystery in the first issue, and more often than not, it involves some big death, some misdirection death. It's kind of a cliche of his work, even though I love his work. Nothing doing in this issue was nothing like the usual um, Tom King fare in that regard. And uh, he has this really great way of portraying uh, uh, Supergirl, uh, Kara, as hyper-competent. I scanned through the second issue here, and um, I wasn't sure if I was going to keep getting it in singles or wait until it comes out in a collected edition. But, man, when I scanned through this issue, it just really had me riveted. Uh, I A big part is that I... I was going to just swear my face off, and I may as well. I fucking love crypto. <laughs> and um, crypto uh, is featured heavily in this comic. So, highly recommended from this guy. Uh, the next up, we got Superman and the Authority. This is this neat effect of what was once going to be a 5G comic. Superman gets aged out. Um, uh, his son, John, takes over, which is actually happening right now. Um, and uh, Superman becomes kind of authoritarian and sets up this authority team. Uh, Grant Morrison pushed back on that. He was like, nah, 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 nah. Superman's not going to become this authoritarian kind of madman. He's the best of the best, and he's going to maintain being the best of the best. How this lines up with current DC continuity is completely beyond me. I don't know if it, it does. Um, in some one of the little previews they've shown, Superman hanging out with uh, 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 Kennedy, um, uh, and th having this explanation for why he didn't save Kennedy when he got assassinated because he was busy uh, helping out the moon landing or something. So, uh, clearly this was a book designed for the original 5G timeline that has nothing to do with it now, or maybe it does, I don't know. Uh, so I can't wait to read it. I, I, I've only seen the previews, I haven't flicked through this at all yet. I love Grant Morrison, I love this design for Superman, I love the authority. I'm a big fan of Janin as an artist, so um, whose name I'm sure I'm butchering is probably Janin or something. Uh, can't wait to read this. Next up we got Superman. Uh, red and blue. I scanned through this issue and boy did it get me weepy. Um, the crypto story in this issue is phenomenal. There's this absolutely beautiful story about his father in this comic and um, how his father struggled with being an old man with the kid in his life and just basically parenting. And um, as a father myself, oh man, right in the feels. I cried twice just scanning through this book. I didn't even read it. Actually, I read that story with his, his father. Um, I couldn't stop reading it once I started reading it. It was just beautiful. Just absolutely beautiful. And that particular story, it's not just about his father. It, it uh, really goes to show the impact that uh, Pa Kent left on uh, on Clark Kent. And it's just a beautiful, heartfelt story, as is this story about crypto in this one. Oh, man. Right in the feels. If you love dogs, you gotta get this comic. Next up, we got um, Skybound X number three. <laughs> this series has been just ridiculous amounts of fun. This uh, Rick Grimes 2000 has just been absurd and wonderful. Um, and uh, what do we got? The other tales in this one are going to be uh, Science Dog, which I can't wait, wait to uh, read. And I almost got all um, Elmer Fuddy on you there because I wanted to mention the uh, how they changed Science Dog in the cartoon to Seance Dog. I've never read any Murder Falcon, so I can't wait to check that out in Assassination Nation. I haven't read any of that either, so uh, this should be a heck of a lot of fun. One issue left after this one. Next up, we got another great comic with another great, cool uh, uh dog character in the DC universe right now. What are they calling him? I think um, instead of Nightwing, it's like a, a Nightbone or something or or Barkwing or something. Uh, it's such a great little character in the comic right now. This has been a tremendous run by Tom Taylor. Tom Taylor is got to be one of comics' greatest writers in the moment. This guy just delivers great entertainment issue after issue. Apparently this one gets into his past a little bit um, and I can't can't wait to read it. Next up, we got Batman the Detective. A hold that from last week that I missed. Another great Tom Taylor book. Um, this book's been absolutely tremendous. Uh, Batman in the future a little bit. Uh, he's old. He's grizzled. Uh, he's buddy's Batman. And uh, the basic plot of this is these guys wearing these Batman costumes. 
um, are going around the world killing everybody that Batman saves, and he's trying to get to the bottom of uh, uh, why they're doing what they're doing, who they are, and stopping them because he's Batman. Issue four, only two issues left after this. I can't wait to read it. Oh, and brilliant art by one of the Cuberts. Next up, we got Justice League. Brian Michael Bendis is Justice League. Now we're going to start to cross over a little bit with his Checkmate series in the Justice League comic. Um, uh, having flicked through it, they introduce a new character that may or well, will probably have some sort of impact on the DCU. The question is whether or not the character's lying. I don't want to spoil it, so I'll just let you read it. But this issue seemed really cool. Um, and uh, the Justice League Dark backups are absolutely tremendous. Um, I might even be liking the Justice League Dark more now since the uh, uh, the whole sort of research, um, a restructuring of DC and whatnot. Still following the same storylines. No continuity has been tossed out the window or anything. Can't wait to read this issue. Next up, we got The Flash, a book that I started scan reading it and I I had to pull myself away from reading reading it because man am I happy with Wally West being restored to his um uh uh sort of former glory essentially um this issue puts Wally back exactly to where I wanted him to be thrilled 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 can't wait to fully read this and then next up we got oh boy am I excited about this blue and gold I mean the team of uh, Dan Jurgens and Ryan Sook man I mean uh, the art's beautiful uh, Dan Jurgens is more than a competent writer he created Booster Gold I just can't can't wait to read this comic. Thrilled that Ted Cord is fully back as Blue Beetle. Just thrilled. The next up, we got Jupiter's Legacy Requiem. Uh, the cliche of all cliches of the book is way better than the show continues on. Jupiter's Legacy um, Requiem number one was really fun. Can't wait to read number two. And I have no idea where anything in number two is going. I haven't even looked through it. Can't wait. Next up. Now I hit some Marvel stuff. Uh, King and Black, Namor. I absolutely love Kurt Busiek. I absolutely love Namor. My perpetual complaint with Namor is it seems to be all but forgotten that once upon a time, time <laughs> Namor was a guy that could take on the Avengers. Namor was a guy by himself. Namor was a dude who fought the Hulk toe-to-toe -to -toe regularly and beat him here and there. And so I get bummed out that people feel this need to give him extra powers to make him a true threat. Come on. Namor is the badass of all badasses. He's strong as hell. He's a great fighter. He's tough as hell. He's got a great strategic mind. Um, he's durable as hell. And uh, he's relentless. So I can't wait to read this. Next up, The Union. What is it called? Like, The Union, uh, The Britannia Project. Um, I'm really excited about this. I love these British characters. Um, I'm a big fan of, uh, of uh, Grist. And DeVito, I think, is one of uh, comics' least appreciated artists. Um, uh, I, I flicked through tons of this when it was on the stands and kicking around. And every time I flicked through it, it just tickled me pink. So I can't, can't, can't wait to finally read this thing. Uh, and then we got... The next uh, DC Future State book, Suicide Squad. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the contents of are of this. This is the this will be the fifth uh, Future State book that I've gotten. I've really loved all these. Um, they've done a great job of packaging these, um, and uh, the, I thought Future State was a really really fun series overall. So I can't wait to flick through this and discard of my singles and just have this great little collection of Future State comics on my bookshelf. And then next up, we got Once in Future, a really, really fun comic. Um, I've only read the first volume of this, and I just realized, having gotten volume three, like, wait a second, I still haven't read volume three, so I gotta get on that. Uh, and uh, having said that, once I'm done this, I'm actually gonna order me a copy of volume two. The basic premise behind this is uh, this cult is trying to bring um, King Arthur back to Britain, um, but careful what you ask for the, uh, 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 um, King Britain, sorry, um, King Arthur, the King Arthur that we think of from lore isn't the King Arthur that, uh, 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 shows up here. There is a very interesting interpretation of it and it's brilliant. It sets up lots of mayhem. Um, uh, Kieran Gillen's a absolutely great writer as is uh dan mora a great artist so i can't wait to dig into this and there you have it this week's comics hope you're all doing well and keeping safe and we'll see you next time